Hello friends and welcome to 3 AM Europe. A couple of days ago I received a message from someone who inquired whether I knew something about the 23rd of September being an apocalyptic date, almost like the end of the world, and to which I simply replied, no I did not. So I did some research and I want to tell you in a nutshell I want to quickly give you an overview of what this theory, the 23rd of September 2017, is. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, we see a great sign in heaven, a woman about to give birth, clothed in the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Now, people mean that the constellation Virgo, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it represents a virgin, a woman. That's what they say. During September and October each year, the sun appears in the constellation Virgo for about a month. For a day or two each month, the moon appears in the general vicinity of where Virgo's feet are supposed to be. Therefore, there is a day or two each year with the sun in Virgo and the moon near her feet. This year occurs on September the 23rd. This year the planet Jupiter is in the constellation Virgo as well. Many websites are promoting the idea that Jupiter represents the child about to be born in the sign of Revelation 12 verses 1 and 2. There are several arguments that are basically said here that Jupiter was sort of this king of the gods in Roman mythology and therefore Jupiter represents a king and Christians recognize Jesus as the king of kings. And people reason that being near the womb of Virgo, the king is soon to be born. Some argue that the length of time Jupiter is spending in Virgo's womb this year is equal to the human gestation period, which supposedly further enforces the supposed fulfillment of prophecy. Now, my critique of the theory of the 23rd of September being the apocalypse and the end of the world, I want to use the Bible um, in giving this critique. I'm not going to give you an astronomical or an astrological or a co cosmological or whatever kind of perspective. There are plenty of people who have done that the past couple of weeks and a month. Now, having studied theology and working as a pastor at the moment, I will briefly give you a biblical expose of what Revelation 12 really says and why it has nothing to do with the constellation of Virgo or planet X. So, I'm not, going, I'm not going into the validity of these events and their actual existence. You know, the constellation of Virgo and whatever happens there, it truly does. But I want to argue now that Revelation 12 has nothing to do with it. Now, you perhaps may be a strong uh, uh, adherent to the theory of the 23rd of September. And I just want to want you to please listen to this and then make up your mind. And then you can see the two sides of it. I want to give you at least nine reasons why the 23rd of September, as the end of the world, is not supported by the Bible. Well, first of all, when we study the Bible, it is crucial that we are not coming with a certain agenda or preconceived ideas which we are trying to find support for in the Bible. Instead, we are supposed to come with a humble heart to the Bible and asking God through the Holy Spirit to teach us, and then we can make up our minds of what the Bible says. So it is for this reason that when we take a look at, for instance, Revelation chapter 12, our primary key to unlock this prophecy lies not in the field of astronomy or cosmology or physics, but in the fields of biblical theology. The book of Revelation contains 404 verses. Out of 404 verses, scholars are arguing that at least 270 are directly taken from the Old Testament. So the book of Revelation did not come about in a vacuum. Instead, it has its background just as the New Testament in the Old Testament. Understanding the New Testament, including Revelation without the Old Testament, is impossible and it will lead people to all kinds of fascinating, captivating, yet foolish theories like the one we are investigating now. Secondly, the theme of Revelation chapter 12 is significant. Revelation 12 becomes not only the foundation for the book of Revelation as Sigvet Tunstad has uh, so mightily argued, 
but the lenses out of which we should read the entire Bible. The theme here is the cosmic conflict between good and evil. This chapter gives us an insight into the history before humans existed, and it takes us through the history of humanity until the end of time when Jesus returns, and there are three main players in Revelation 12. The woman, the woman who gives birth to the child, and the dragon. Now, interesting that the dragon in verse 3 is described in the following way. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Now, my question is, if the woman is to be a constellation or a planet or uh, some sort of astronomic event, why not the dragon as well? When you go to the core of this theory and let the Bible speak for itself, you see that it is a house not built upon the rock. And when the storm will come, unfortunately, many people's faith will be destroyed. So, according to the prophecy, and by the way, that's why I'm doing this clip, so that people's faith will not be destroyed. According to the prophecy, these three beings, the woman, the child, and the dragon, they are in a constant fight. So, while the theme does involve some sort of cosmic conflict, it is so much more than planets and stars. Thirdly, what confuses people is that the description, I saw a sign in heaven. And some people say that no, this certainly proves the theory. Well, actually not. When the book of Revelation speaks that something big will take place, the idea of heaven is used. Something comes down from heaven, or you can hear something big from heaven. We could also say that uh, both the woman and the dragon is seen to be in heaven, and John sees that, and he is basically seeing that something great is to take place. And also in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, we are told that there was a war in heaven. Now, this cosmic war started in heaven. It continues on planet Earth. So, it doesn't necessarily need to mean that uh, some sort of astronomic event is going to take place. Instead, something of a huge proportionate distinction is what John the Revelator is trying to tell us here. Now, fourthly, who is the woman? Now, some people say that this is this constellation or this is this planet or whatever. But if you let the Bible interpret itself, both the Old and the New Testament are clear that a woman is a symbol of God's people. Isaiah 54, verse 5, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 32. There are a lot of verses telling us what this is. And Revelation 12 introduces us to God's faithful people from the very beginning to the end of time. Where we read in chapter 12 verse 17 that the remnant, in other words, those who are left of those who are faithful to God, they are the ones who keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. In Revelation 17 we read about a woman. But unlike the first one, Revelation 17 says that she is a whore. The Old Testament repeatedly compares apostate Israel who were God's people, but they were unfaithful many times. And the Bible says that they were whoring after heathen gods. Ezekiel 23 verse 30, Isaiah 23 verse 17, Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 15. So we see a juxtaposition of the true faithful people of God in the Old Testament and New Testament represented by the pure woman of Revelation 12 and the unfaithful ones in Revelation 17, also known as Babylon. Now, fifthly, the woman is clothed with the sun. Now, that is the glory of the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ, and not Son, as in the Son of, of the Father having a Son, but the Son, S-U-N, of Righteousness, as Malachi chapter 4, verse 2 says. The church when it is united with her source, Jesus Christ, it becomes the light of the world. So that's why it has the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Babylon, on the other hand, is not clothed with the clean righteousness of Christ, but with flamboyant garments carrying a cup filled with abominations. Sixthly, the moon under her feet. What is that? Now, 
that basically becomes the foundation for her staying or for her falling. In Psalms chapter 89, verse 34, we read, It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. So this foundation that the faithful church of God has is a permanent one. But what is the foundation? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So just as the moon reflects the light of the sun, so also the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible foreshadows the gospel of Jesus Christ through the types and shadows, particularly the sacrificial system and other Old Testament scriptures, which Jesus said, search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. The seventh reason is that the church is crowned with the 12 stars. Now, any Bible students picks up the importance of this number 12. In the Old Testament, there were 12 tribes of Israel. There were 12 judges. The Old Testament priesthood consisted of 24 courses or 2 times 12. 1 Chronicles chapter 24, verses 1 to 18. This, of course, goes into the New Testament time where we have the 12 apostles. And then at the end of time, the final remnant church is symbolized by the number 144,000, which is a multiple of the number 12. So this woman is nothing else than the church of God of all ages. The eighth reason has to do with the child. Unlike the theory that Jupiter would somehow be the child, a clear exegetical and simple reading of the text leads us that the child who comes from the woman, i.e. from God's people, is none other than Jesus Christ. As we know, Satan tried to devour the child as it was born with the command of Herod to kill all the newborn babies. But Jesus survived and Jesus was victorious in his life. He was sinless, he died on the cross and rose again, and he was caught up unto God and to his throne. This woman cannot be Mary as the Catholic Church teaches because the prophecy says that the child, when it is taken up into heaven, the woman would flee into the wilderness for 1260 days. But that is not Joseph and Mary did, and they were not in the wilderness either. Instead, the woman after the ascension of Jesus, when he goes to heaven, the New Testament would be attacked. But God, in his providential care, he would take care of the church forever. And simply, lastly, the final reason and our ninth, I am not trying to belittle anyone who adheres to this theory. But a study of Revelation chapter 12 cannot in any way, shape or form go together with the apocalyptic idea of September 23rd. I'm not saying that nothing will happen on the 23rd. It may be. But friends, Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 1, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Isn't that what people want nowadays? He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. So friends, instead of looking for signs in the heavens, which actually the occultists are trying to do by their you know, usage of astrology, let us have our minds fixed and rooted in the Bible so that we see the signs of the times. I do believe with all my heart that Jesus is coming soon, but according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 16, we cannot know the day and the hour for the second coming of Jesus. So if there are any Christian brothers and sisters, or there are some people who are completely hooked upon this theory, I just want to say, don't be caught up in sensationalism and unnecessary fanaticism which do not find its fulfillment in the Bible. I'm not trying to destroy your faith, but I want to help your faith so that your faith which might, may not suffer a shipwreck when the 24th of September will come. Once again, Jesus is coming soon, and we should all prepare for that big and awesome day. And my question is, are you ready?
because Jesus wants each one of us to be ready when He will come. Thank you for listening and thank you. Please like this clip, please share this clip and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for new information about the end of times and the Gospel of Jesus Christ.